Now, isn't the most amazing thing about going to a film festival is that you have your mind expanded. You get to watch something that, you know, in my case, I never would have thought of. I'm Peter Brett Kelly. I'm a filmmaker, and um, I've chosen Last and First Men. It's an extraordinary film, a hybrid film. And I have to say I've chosen it selfishly because I'm currently making a hybrid film. And so I wanted to view something of a master. Johan Johansson, the, the filmmaker, he's Icelandic um, and I've been following him. He's actually a composer and he's composed extraordinary work and been twice Oscar nominated. Um, and I was lucky, I was actually in London uh, working on my previous film, Yellow is Forbidden, and I had a weekend to spare and I quickly jumped on a plane and flew down to Bilbao because he had an exhibition on then, there in Bilbao. And I, I just felt it was this wonderful kind of every day I'd go and I'd get something more from this amazing exhibition where he wrote the music and did a nine panel film. Now this film is his first and sadly last film um, because he took his life last year. And the genius that he is as his work lives on and was is truly in this film. So, and so it's everything that I kind of love because I don't quite understand it but there's something so marvellous in it. Um, his directorial choices, that it be black and white, that the only colour in it is the character of Tilda Swinton, and she's this luminescent light. And then you have her beautiful voice, the beautiful voice of Tilda Swinton. It's a 1930s story that he's resurrected, and Tilda plays a character two million years in our future, I think it is. Um, and it will just expand your mind, and you'll... Just, you've just got to let it wash over you. Of course the music which he's done in the sound design is extraordinary. So turn it up loud at home because, and just let it wash over you. And the characters in the film, besides Tilda, the luminescent light, are um, sculptures from the USSR era in the former Yugoslavia. And they become the characters. You maybe got to wonder, what is the documentary element of this film and it's the unexpected because that in the end is the beauty of documentary you don't go and see a documentary a great documentary is not one that you already know what's going to happen it's that surprising element of it so there's this incredible single shot where it's just a slow push and it's through mist and you're wondering what am I seeing what am I seeing and then the mist clears and there's this being that is a sculptural architectural thing and to time that you know, that is documentary, that's the, that's the beauty of it in that moment. The cinematographer and the director could never have predicted that would happen. From the first shot, which is like he, um, they are moving uh, um, from the sculpture, it's like a springboard, you're going up into the sky, it's like a springboard and you springboard into the story. And it's moments like that that I just think are incredible. Um, really strong directing choices. But there's also the lines, the, the writing is beautiful and orgiastic end. I mean, there's just so many amazing lines that you'll want to, you know, watch again and scribble down because they are just such great lines, that, you know. Um, but also, um, you know, when I chose it, I was like, oh, he's called it the last and first men. Where's the rest of us? Where's the other 51%? But I think that the reason that he chose Tilda Swinton is to bring in that inclusive nature and sort of go, yeah, I mean, in 1930s it was called that, but actually he's talking about all of us. Um, and her voice is so rich and, and beautiful. So, um, yeah, and, and, you know, it's, I think it's quite prosaic. It's sort of saying something very true to what we're all going through now and what's, what's happening now. But it's not, um, it won't bring you down. It'll just make you feel amazed 
and your mind extended.